Hello everyone, welcome to my class today. Today we will see the continuation of endocrine system disorder that is thyroid disorders. So in thyroid disorder there is hyper and hypothyroidism. Hyper is increased secretion of thyroid hormone and hypo is decreased secretion of thyroid hormone. Okay, so before going to the disease condition, let us see an anatomy and physiology of thyroid gland. So when you see the thyroid gland, it is located in the anterior part of the neck that is in front of the uh, neck and on the front of the trachea so it consists of two lobes so you, so you can see in the picture on the two lobes there is a uh, encapsulated lobe and in between there is a narrow connection that is called as the isthmus and thyroid gland is regulated by the hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone which is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland and the thyroid gland is highly vascular in nature and this thyroid gland secretes hormone called as thyroxine it is also T4 and triiodothyronine that is T3. So tri name is 3. So triiodothyronine is T3 and calcitonin. Let's see the thyroid hormones. So in thyroid hormone there is a thyroid stimulating hormone and thyrotrophin releasing hormone. So this the release of thyroid hormone is stimulated by the TSH that is secreted from the anterior pituitary so when the whenever in the blood that is in the circulating blood the thyroid hormones are low then the hypothalamus will release a hormone called thyrotropin releasing hormone which will stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete another hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone okay so in case if the circulating that is in the blood if the thyroid hormone level is high then there will be inhibitory effect that means the hypothalamus will inhibit the secretion of TRH so TSH is also will not be stimulated so both TRH that is thyrotrophin releasing hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone will be uh, not produced okay so that is in case when the blood hormone when the blood thyroid hormones are high okay thyroxine and triiodothyronine so thyroxine is a T4 hormone so this is produced from the thyroid gland and only 20% of T3 will be produced from the thyroid gland. The remaining T3 is produced by the conversion of thyroxine and to synthesis this hormone there must need a uh, chemical called iodine. Okay, So iodine is uh, very much essential for the synthesis then only we use iodized salt in our food in order to help in the synthesis of thyroid hormones and majority of the thyroid hormone they are not present that is around 90 percent of the thyroid hormones are always bound with a plasma protein called globulin so they are like thyroxine binding globulin so this globulin is synthesized by the liver and only little amount of thyroid hormones are as a free circulating thyroid hormones and only these hormones are biologically active that means they uh, produce they do their function okay the biological function of, is done by the unbound free hormones okay so calcitonin is secreted from the parafollicular cells of the thyroid glands and these calcitonin are secreted whenever the circulating calcium levels are high okay that means when the blood calcium is very high they help this calcitonin is secreted and it will metabolize the calcium and it will excrete the calcium through the kidneys okay so that the blood calcium level will become low okay and next when we see the function of this thyroid hormone so main function is the metabolism so thyroid hormone helps in maintaining the basal metabolic rate so whenever our tissues are functioning and uh, to that is when the basal metabolism occurs and all this metabolism is made by is done by the thyroid hormone okay and whenever there is increased thyroid hormone in the blood there will be fat mobilization okay mobilization is they will remove the excess fat from the serum or plasma and they will uh, say they will convert it into glycogen and they will store as adipose tissue in the tissues okay so they also enhance oxidation of fatty acids so by, by this process whenever thyroid hormones are high the fat will be reduced in the blood plasma because they helps in oxidation and also they decrease the cholesterol and triglyceride level in the blood okay and thyroid hormones also helps in metabolism of carbohydrate and also 
helps in the insulin dependent entry of glucose into the cells so that there is increased glycogenesis and glycogenolysis so glucogenesis is formation of glucose and glycogenolysis is breakdown of the glycogen okay so because of this they will help in production of more glucose in the blood okay so these are the metabolic rate next is caloric function okay so because as i already said they help in basal metabolism so whenever basal metabolism is increased our body will start producing heat because the atp that is it is an energy adenosine triphosphate it will undergo hydrolysis that is breakdown and there will be increased oxygen consumption by the tissues and also the basal, whenever basal metabolic rate is increased there will be increased heat and that is called as caloric function and next thyroid hormone is also responsible for the growth okay so along with the pituitary hormones even thyroid hormone helps in growth function so whenever there is thyroid deficiency person will have a growth retardation okay and this so that is all the hormones are together help in uh, help in increasing the growth okay and next is development of brain and if there is normal level of thyroid hormones in the body so during the pregnancy the fetal and also after delivery the neonatal brain will be developed properly so it also helps in development and also it has cardiovascular system function so as i already said because they they help in metabolism of the tissues so thyroid hormone will increase heart rate and also cardiac contractility and cardiac output and thereby they also promote vasodilation so that excess uh, that is adequate blood supply will be for the organs and in the central nervous system they will increase <laughs> that is both decrease and increase concentration of thyroid hormones they can alter the mental state okay so whenever there is more hormone or also decrease hormone they will <laughs> cause mental problems like irritability sluggishness and anxiety nervousness so these are all the uh, <laughs> conditions can occur in central nervous system activity if the thyroid hormone is decreased or increased so it must be in a normal amount okay and next is reproductive function so it uh, normal levels of thyroid hormone is also responsible for reproduction so if the person is having decreased thyroid hormone then the person may also result in infertility that is lack of childbirth and as i already said there is a hormone called calcitonin secreted by the thyroid gland so this calcitonin helps in calcium metabolism that will it is increase the calcium storage in the bones and also it will increase the excretion of calcium from the um, body through urine okay so by this it maintains the calcium level in the blood so next coming to the disorders of thyroid gland so there are hyperthyroidism so hyper is as i already said it is hyperactivity or increased activity of the thyroid gland which results in more production of thyroid hormones and hypothyroidism is decreased or insufficient function of the thyroid gland where there is where it can be caused due to destruction of thyroid tissue or there can be defective that is decreased hormone synthesis and another condition also called thyroiditis so that is itis means inflammation so here the thyroid gland is gone for inflammation this is due to any microorganism or any autoimmune disorder autoimmune disorder is some condition where our own uh, immune system will identify our tissue as a foreign body and they start destroying by producing lymphocytes and fibroid tissue so that is whenever our uh, inflammation occurs the thyroid tissue will be replaced by unwanted tissue that is called fibroid tissue so this occurs in the thyroiditis and next coming to the causes so here i have differentiated between hyper and hypo so hyper it is idiopathic cause and most common in 20 to 40 years old and presence of toxic multinodular goiter okay so whenever hypothyroidism occurs because there is the thyroid gland starts producing more nodular uh, goiter so these nodules also will start producing excess hormones so the patient will go for hyperthyroidism and increased exogenous iodine okay so when we take in more iodine in salt or when more salt is taken or any form of chemical uh, foods when we take more of iodine like fish seafoods 
these all contain iodine so in these conditions there will be increased synthesis of thyroid hormone because iodine helps in production of thyroid hormone as i already said okay and tumors of any pituitary gland thyroid gland okay so whenever there is a tumor tumor tissue will also secrete more and more hormones so whenever both pituitary gland if it is tumors are present they will stimulate the thyroid hormones and in the thyroid gland if there is more uh, excess abnormal tissue this excess tissue also starts producing more hormone where patient can go for hyperthyroidism okay and another condition called graves disease so it is one of an autoimmune disorder so in graves disease these auto antibodies will attach with the receptors in the pituitary gland that helps in producing the tsh okay that is thyroid stimulating hormone so these so these antibodies will attach with the receptors and the receptors will start producing more and more of thyroid stimulating hormone so whenever tsh is stimulated the it will stimulate the thyroid gland to release the hormone called t3 and t4 that is thyro thyroidine and thyroxine so where there will be enlargement of the thyroid gland and we'll see causes of hypothyroidism so in hypo there can be primary or secondary okay so primary means there is some defect in the thyroid gland itself and secondary is there can be defect in the pituitary or hypothalamus so this area they are not releasing the thyroid hormones okay and in primary there can be destruction of thyroid gland so this can be occur due to hashimoto's thyroiditis so in hashimoto's thyroiditis it is can be occur due to any microorganism or any abnormal immune function which will cause destruction of the thyroid tissue whereby there will be decreased synthesis of thyroid hormone okay and when we keep treating for hyperthyroidism okay so in hyperthyroidism we start uh, that is we do surgery to remove the excess thyroid tissue that is which is st stimulating more production of this thyroid hormones or we do a full thyroidectomy where we fully remove the thyroid gland or we give some radiation to suppress the function of the thyroid gland okay so when we keep treating for hyperthyroidism at the at the other stage the patient can go for hypothyroidism because there is no thyroid glands to produce the uh, thyroid hormones okay and and again graves disease so in graves disease it can also uh, cause hyper or hypothyroidism okay so in case if the auto antibodies they attach with the receptors and produce more and more tsh it will result in hyperthyroidism on the other hand if the uh, if the uh, that is uh, sorry if the immune system is functioning abnormally and it causes auto destruction of the thyroid tissue then patient will have the hypothyroidism okay so this all occurs when there is destruction of the thyroid gland which will be due to which will result in decrease secretion of thyroid hormones okay and next is defective thyroid hormone synthesis so in defective there can be drugs like amiodarone so amiodarone is an antiarrhythmic drug given for heart diseases and lithium is an antipsychotic drug so when these uh, lithium amiodarone and lithium they block the thyroid hormone secretion okay so because so these drugs have a uh, effect on the iodine and they will block the that is uh, they will block the thyroid hormone secretion and there is a condition called cretinism that is hypothyroidism in infants we call cretinism so in this condition also by, during pregnancy itself the baby's thyroid gland is not developed properly so there is decreased secretion of the thyroid hormone okay so in, the, in this condition there is defective thyroid hormone synthesis and again there is secondary hypothyroidism so here the problem is not in the thyroid gland but there is problem in the pituitary gland so when the pituitary is gone for disease it will not stimulate the tsh to secrete when tsh is not secreted t3 and t4 hormones are again not secreted okay again if there is an hypothalamic disease so i as i already said the thyrotrophin releasing hormone is produced by the hypothalamus so when there is hypothalamic dysfunction or disease due to some head injury or any uh, cns defect 
so in these conditions the hypothalamus will not function properly so they won't release the thyrotrophin hormone so when thyrotrophin releasing hormone is not released then the tsh will not be stimulated when tsh is not stimulated the t3 t4 will not be synthesized okay and then transient hypothyroidism so as we already said when we give some therapy to treat hyperthyroidism for a uh, temporary period patient will go for hypothyroidism so that is decreased um, thyroid thyroid hormone secretion so this may be temporary and after treatment for hypothyroidism patient can revert to normal okay and next is we'll see pathophysiology so in hyperthyroidism so as i already said in graves disease there is auto antibodies which will uh, which will go and attach with the receptor that is tsh receptors so these antibodies also start producing more and more uh, thyroid stimulating hormone so when they uh, stimulate the thyroid hormones there is excessive release of the thyroid hormone that is t3 and t4 which will uh, so when more and more hormone is sec secreted as i already said they increase the basal metabolism when basal metabolism is increased more and more multi nodules will be formed in the thyroid gland okay so here when more gland uh, more more nodules are produced these nodules also will start stimulating the secretion of thyroid hormone and uh, thereby there will be more and more increase in the basal metabolism that occurs in hyperthyroidism okay so on in hypothyroidism so there can be destruction this can be due to removal of a thyroid tissue or it can be an infection which is destroying the thyroid tissue or any radioactive therapy so any conditions where the thyroid gland is destroyed so there will be atrophy atrophy is wasting of the thyroid muscles so when thyroid tissue is wasted there will be defective that means decreased synthesis of thyroid hormone so there is decreased basal metabolism so the fat all the molecules will not be metabolized so whatever fat we are eating they directly go into the plasma and they cause uh, obstruction in the blood vessels and they can predispose to many disorders and one is heart disorder okay next coming to the clinical manifestation so in hyperthyroidism there will be goiter so when we palpate the palpate or also if we inspect the throat and ask the person to swallow you can see a nodule uh, that is a enlarged tissue in the neck that is called as goiter and on auscultation okay so when this enlarged tissue is there when you keep a stethoscope and auscultate you will hear the bruits okay because already i said thyroid gland is highly vascular in nature so there will be excess uh, pressure inside the gland that you can hear that is called as bruits and this patient will have exophthalmos exophthalmos is protrusion of the eyeball okay because the retroorbital tissue will will become big and also because of the fat and other thing deposit deposit in that area the uh, orbital area will become bill and big and the eyeball will be protruded outside okay and these patients uh, because the eyeball is protruded outside they cannot close the eye, eyes fully so that means eyelid will not completely close so because of that on the cornea there will be ulcers okay because uh, the air whenever air or any dry air is touching the cornea and they cannot close the eyes they will become dryness and because of the dryness at the later stage patient can go also <coughs> vision changes that is blindness can occur okay and acropathy so acropathy is clubbing and swelling in the fingers and this patient will have weight loss because there won't be um that is there will be increased metabolism and when increased metabolism is there food will get digested and they can keep on getting excreted okay so because of that there will be weight loss and increase uh, nervousness okay so again brain function will one uh, one uh, function of the thyroid gland is to maintain the brain function so when the brain function is impaired there will be nervousness that is shaking or tremors will be there can patient will have diarrhea vomiting sleep disturbance restlessness irritability these are all uh, due to increased basal metabolism when the food is keeping digested and it is coming outside okay and then apathetic hyperthyroidism will be there so in this condition patient will have anorexia apathy 
apathy is lack of coordination lassitude is very lazy feeling and depression atrial fibrillation and confusion okay so these all you can see in hyperthyroidism on the other hand in hypothyroidism there will be fatigue lethargy personality mental changes impaired memory slow speech decreased initiative somnolence is always feeling sleepy and depression so again hypothyroidism there won't be metabolism so tissues will not get proper energy so patient will have all these signs and symptoms and decrease activity no exercise tolerance shortness of breath so even small work patient will have breathlessness and anemia because here uh, bone marrow depression so whenever metabolism is not taking properly absorption of nutrients will not be there to the organs so patient will go for anemia and angina because there won't be fat mobilization when thyroid gland is thyroid hormones are low so fat will get accumulated in the blood itself and there will be blocking in the blood vessels okay and in gi you can see a chlorhydria that is decrease hcl production and constipation that means decrease gi motility okay so this all because basal metabolism is decreased and patient will have cold intolerance that is even small cold patient cannot tolerate and hair loss dry and coarse skin brittle nails hoarseness muscle weakness swelling weight gain and decrease metabolic rate okay so this all will be seen in the hypothyroidism so in hyper it is weight loss and in hypo it is weight gain this is because fat is uh, getting accumulated here and there and myxedema is a condition which occurs in adults hypothyroidism in adults is called myxedema here there will be accumulation of mucopolysaccharides in the skin and tissues which and there will be puffiness periorbital edema and mask like face so these all the characteristics of myxedema and also patient with hypothyroidism there will be menstrual irregularities that is menorrhagia menorrhagia is there will be excess bleeding during uh, menstrual cycle okay and coming to the diagnostic findings so in hypothyroidism you will collect history and physical examination where you can see the signs of graves disease sorry goiter etc and ophthalmic examination will show exophthalmos that is uh, protruded eyeballs corneal ulcers that is dryness of the eye visual changes will be there and when you check the tsh levels free t3 and t4 levels these all will be elevated in hyperthyroidism and radioactive iodine uptake test okay so this will differentiate if patient is having a graves disease or a thyroiditis so in graves disease when you do this test there will be homogeneous uptake of hormones whereas in thyroiditis there will be only 2% uptake of the hormone and persons with goiter will have high up uptake of iodine okay so how much iodine the thyroid gland is absorbing according to that you can uh, differentiate what type of uh, hyperthyroidism it is okay so in radioactive iodine uptake test okay and in hypothyroidism so in physical examination and history you can see all the mixed edema symptoms and tsh levels t3 trh t4 levels so all these levels will be low okay next to differentiate whether the person is having thyroid hormone prob thyroid gland disease or hypothalamus or pituitary we have to check this uh, check the tsh and tsh levels okay so when tsh levels are high then means patient is having thyroid gland disease which means the thyroid gland sorry the tsh is stimulated from the pituitary but the thyroid glands are not able to synthesis the thyroid hormones whereas if the tsh level is low then means the problem is in the pituitary or hypothalamus okay so only if the pituitary is stimulating the tsh then only thyroid can uh, thyroid gland can produce the hormone so when the tsh is low then means the problem is in the pituitary or hypothalamus then we have to inject the trh that is thyrotrophin releasing hormone so when we inject externally at the trh and then check the tsh and that time if there is an increased ths tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone then the problem is in the hypothalamus okay because trh is not released from the hypothalamus that is why pituitary is not able to stimulate the thyroid stimulating 
hormone okay so this all will be seen and in lipid profile there will be elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels because the bmr is reduced in hypothyroidism and they are not able to metabolize all the fats and glucose so in the lipid profile test you will be seeing elevated cholesterol and triglyceride and the complete blood count will show anemia so that is decreased hemoglobin and decreased hematocrit levels and serum creatinine kinase will be elevated because when the fat is depositing in the uh, blood vessels they can also obstruct the blood vessels in the heart and when the blood vessels in the heart is obstructed the heart is not able to function properly when heart is not functioning so he, the creatinine kinase is a pro, enzyme of the heart muscles so when they are not functioning this the, the enzyme will not be utilized by the heart muscle so this creatinine kinase will be elevated in case of hypothyroidism okay and when we see the severe complication in hyperthyroidism it is thyrotoxicosis which is also called as thyroid storm and it is a very rare life threatening condition so when there is excessive secretion of hyperthyroid hormones and um, that is the, when there is more severe secretion more and more secretion is there then the person will have signs of tachycardia heart failure shock hyperthermia means increased temperature this is because increased basal metabolism restlessness agitation seizures diarrhea delirium coma and uh, this all will be uh, seen and this all will be triggered whenever patient is having some stresses that is like infection or any trauma in the body or any surgery the this uh, can be triggered okay so that thyrotoxicosis can be triggered by any any of these conditions okay and on the other hand if the hypothyroidism is very severe again the person have a medical emergency or a life threatening condition called mixed edema co coma so here there will be full uh, loss of consciousness so the patient will go for coma and this can be precipitated or this can be triggered when patient is having exposed to cold or if there is any infection or patient is on drugs like opioids tranquilizers and barbiturates okay these are all antipsychotic drugs so when patient is on these drugs he may go to the severe complication called mixed edema coma and next is pharmacological management so the drug of choice is antithyroid drugs in hyperthyroidism so the um, antithyroid okay against thyroid hormone secretion these drugs are given so propyl thyro uh, propyl thyroxyl this blocks the conversion of t4 to t3 and metimazole so is administered so this is a safe drug in pregnancy so in case patient is having the uh, increased thyroid secretion during pregnancy then this drug is given and also when the patient is posted for any surgical procedure or interventional therapy like radiation therapy first we have to bring the patient to a normal thyroid state okay only then we can take the patient for surgery otherwise patient can go for complications called thyro toxicosis so to bring the patient to the normal also they inject the drug called methimazole okay and they also can give iodine therapy so solution called lugol solution is there it is a saturated solution of potassium iodine so this can be directly injected to the thyroid tissue or it can be given iv and this is this will inhibit the synthesis of t3 and t4 hormones and also they will block the release of these hormones in the blood and okay and also they decrease the vascularity of the thyroid gland so when the vascularity is decreased and the thyroid gland will not be able to secrete the hormones okay so these all the um, functions of this iodine therapy and uh, beta and also lugol solution is given in order to bring the eu thyroid state as i already said prior, prior to surgery or any radiation therapy and also along with this we have to give beta adrenergic blockers like propanolol and atenolol so these are all given in order to give patient symptomatic relief in case patient is having any asthma or heart disease okay and this is for pharmacology in hyper and in hypo so only we have to uh, give the because hormones are not secreted by the body we have to give the hormones externally okay so that is levothyroxine will treat hypothyroidism so this is an thyroid hormone and also another hormone called lyotrix so it is a combination of both this levothyroxine and 
lyotyronine okay so this is the synthetic preparation that is it is uh, commercially prepared in the markets okay and also you have to instruct the patient lifelong therapy is needed if a patient is not li taking lifelong therapy the patient can have the signs and symptoms of the disease and can also go to the complications and coming to the nutritional therapy so in hyperthyroidism there will be increased basal metabolism so all the uh, nutrition how much ever is taking it will be excreted from the body so patient uh, needs more of calories okay so more of nutrition is required so high calorie diet nearly 4000 to 5000 kilo calories you have to ask the patient to take and also protein should be high like 1 to 2 gram per kg so because all the tissues needs protein for metabolism and uh, if more metabolism more protein will be wasted okay so you have to uh, give in the form of diet and carbohydrate has to be given so again for metabolism of carbohydrate we have to give normal carbohydrate and vitamin a c b1 and b6 so these are all given because in from the body due to metabolism the all the diet will be wasted so we have to supplement the patient adequately and here you have to tell the patient to avoid all the highly seasoned high fiber diet all has to be avoided because this will increase the motility of the gi tract okay so when the gi tract motility is increased that is already patient will have more metabolism and excretion will be there so if we give a fiber diet they will increase the excretion more and all the food will what the patient taking nutrition will be wasted okay and also patient will have uh, edema in, in this condition hyperthyroidism there can be edema of the eyes so you can ask the patient to restrict salt to prevent edema and in hypothyroidism so here you have to tell the patient to take low caloric diet because uh, the patient will have weight gain in this so we have to prevent weight gain so patient has to take low calorie and low fat because fat metabolism will not be there so you have to supplement very slowly and iron and folic acid because patient can go for anemia and vitamin b12 supplement in case of cobalamin deficiency and also tell the patient to take rich in uh, foods rich in iron like green leaves foods vegetables has to be advised interventional therapy for thyroidism so in hypothyroidism there is no surgical management because already thyroid gland is not there so we have to only give lifelong pharmacological management so but in hyperthyroidism we can do some interventional therapies so that is radioactive iodine therapy so here radioactive form of iodine is uh, given to the patient so this will damage the thyroid tissue and thereby it will decrease the thyroid secretion and also before this therapy we have to make the patient to a new thyroid state that is we have to bring the normal thyroid uh, values so we have to inject antithyroid drugs like as i already said okay so as i already said there is methimazole this can be injected before the therapy and post therapy patient can go for hypothyroidism because iodine therapy can destroy the thyroid tissue so patient can have decreased secretion of hypothyroidism so you have to replace the hormone by giving the thyroxine hormone okay and thyroidectomy can be done so this is removal of the thyroid gland so it can be a subtotal thyroidectomy where 90 percent of thyroid tissue will be re removed or you can also do an endoscopic thyroidectomy so endoscopy is a minimally invasive procedure so that means we don't do an open procedure here only if there is some nodules or any adenoma any benign growth is there then you can uh, through an endoscope you can remove the excess thyroid tissue again here before surgery we have to make the patient to a new thyroid state that is normal thyroid uh, measure should be there so we give anti-thyroid drugs and post uh, post operatively we have to replace the hormones and again as i already said calcitonin is also secreted by thyroid gland so patient can also have deficient calcium after surgery so you have to also administer calcium to prevent hypocalcemia okay that is decreased calcium
and collaborative care so in hyper you have thyroidism you have to see cardiac monitoring and adequate oxygen iv fluid administration in case patient is having severe diarrhea and vomiting and all the fluids are getting lost through diarrhea and vomiting and also calm quiet environment to prevent sleep disturbance and tell the patient to take rest so that they will be um, preventing anxiety restlessness irritability and also the bed cover should be light okay because dark colors etc can cause irritability so environment should be cool and soothing for the patient and also patient will be excessive diaphoretic that is excessive sweating so you have to keep on changing the linen whenever it is becoming dirty <coughs> and also it is wet with uh, sweating and you have to give a fowler's position so that the edema from the eyes all the fluid will drain uh, through drain to the heart through gravity and when a patient is going outside you have to tell the patient to use dark glass because they can prevent because i said in these patients you cannot they cannot close the eye completely so dust smoke or dirt entering the eye can be prevented by using the glasses and also tell the patient to come for regular follow up treatment because in uh, post surgical patient patient can go for hypothyroidism and there is replacement therapy needed so you have to tell them to come for the regular check up and again hypothyroidism we need cardiac and respiratory support because here all here there can be accumulation of fat in the blood vessels and the functioning of the blood uh, organs can be damaged okay so if needed you have to start uh, the oxygen therapy that is called respiratory support and vital signs should be monitored and this patient will have weight gain so you have to have a regular checking of the body weight and fluid intake output chart again to prevent any fluid or electrolyte loss and energy level because this patient will have decreased energy and decreased exercise tolerance so you have to check the energy of the patient and ecg and cardiac enzyme should be done in order to check for cardiac complications and also you have to stress the patient the need for lifelong therapy because till death the patient has to replace the hormone by taking uh, orally and hyper so when patient is having any sodium deficit like if it is going less than 130 ml equivalent per liter then you have to administer hypertonic saline okay so normal uh, saline which we use in the hospital it has 0.45% of uh, saline that is uh, sodium chloride whereas hypertonic saline will have 3% of sodium chloride so we have to give higher sodium again this patient you have to tell them to come for check up if they have signs of dyspnea autopnea tachycardia palpitation and nervousness okay so that's all for today's class i hope you understood my class thank you for listening please like share subscribe and click the notification button for regular update of my videos